you know, my last couple of videos were kind of on the extensive side, a little bit time consuming. So I wanted to try something a little bit different and do my third mail time video. And as you can see, it's getting a little bit overwhelming. This isn't even everything I have. This is just a sampling of all the stuff that's been sent to me over the last year that I have not reviewed. So what I'm gonna do is find a fair way to pick among these and do quick reviews of each one. Well, not all of them, but a sampling of them. I've input all of the ones that are sitting here into this app and I'm gonna spin a spinner and whichever one comes up, I'm reviewing first. First spin. What is it? Oh, this is the Ice breaker, and this is actually probably the most requested of any of these. So that's a good way to get started. This one was advertised a lot online and social media. They said their Kickstarter was 80% funded in five days. That's very impressive. Probably didn't hurt that they had a social media campaign going on at the same time. Um, let's see. It's watertight, you can freeze it at any angle. Easy to transport, hygienic. Our Kickstarter ends December 6th. If you could post a review before then, it would benefit us most. Whoops. Sorry guys. But that doesn't mean I can't still check it out. Now, from what I understand from the social media ads that I saw is that you fill this up with water, put the water in there, you freeze it, and then you pull it apart with these handles like that, and you've got ice. Now, the last time I did a Next Gen Ice Cube Maker, it was one of the worst products I've ever reviewed, which was the Ice Genie. So let's see if this one does better. So all I have to do is fill it up, wait six to eight hours, and then see how it works. First, I'll just rinse it out a little bit. Oh no, there's instructions in there. Oh man, didn't really expect that. So, uh, <laughs> sorry, icebreaker pop. I'll read this over, but uh, it looks like some just basic do's and don'ts. Is there anything else in there? Okay, good, no. Just gonna rinse this out. Let's see how waterproof this really is. Good, that's, that's a good sign. I'll put it next to my other ice cube trays. See you in about six hours. All right, while the icebreaker pop is in the freezer, let's try the next item. All right, the coffee. All right, so this is the coffee I'm referring to, which is Waka Quality Instant Coffee. They sent this nice personalized note here. We would greatly appreciate your editorial consideration of our quality instant coffee. So there really is, that's, there's not much to really explain about it. So let me open this up and see what I have to do. That's it, that's it. So there's eight servings in this box. Now I've never been much of an instant coffee person, but I guess most people aren't. I guess that's why they have their hashtag instant is back because they're trying to bring it back. Well, let's try it out and see how it goes. The instructions are simple. You just put it into a cup, add water and stir. I'm skeptical, but I haven't had instant coffee I really liked. Maybe they'll change my mind and instant really is back. Let's try it out. Here we go. Well, it smells like coffee. You know what, I've gotta say, this is actually pretty good. I'm a little surprised. I'm sitting there analyzing this coffee because you know what, it's, I've had instant coffee before and it was terrible. Back when I was younger, man, that instant coffee then was awful. I'm, I'm a little bit surprised. This is definitely not the instant coffee of yesteryear. I'm gonna say Waka coffee is a surprise. I would actually say this is actually pretty good. If you ever wanna try instant coffee, I don't know where to get it, I'll link below, but wakacoffee.com or wakacoffee on social media. Now over my cup of waka coffee, I'm gonna try the next one on the list. Ooh, socket seat. This is what I was hoping would show up. Now I did a cushion comparison last year. I did three cushions and the socket seat came in the mail recently and I, I wasn't sure I wanted to do another cushion comparison, but I did want to try it because it looked interesting. And uh, I, you know, I, I have back problems and I'm always in the market for something like that. So let me crack the socket seat open and see how it works. Uh, normally I wouldn't have a gaming chair in the middle of my living room, but this is the best place to show you how the next one works. This socket seat, this is a seat cushion that has two, I guess you'd call them bun cutouts. I actually posted a picture of this on social media asking for good nicknames for these. So before this video is over, I'll read some of the best candidates for what these bun cutouts 
should be called. But it says socket seat plug into comfort. It has relief for your spine and I guess for your buns too. I'm gonna crack this open and put it on this chair and see how it actually works. This is one I'll have to probably give you an update after a few days because one use isn't gonna be enough, but I sit in this chair all day long. Right now I'm using the purple cushion, but maybe this one's better. Let's check it out. By the way, if I haven't mentioned already, I will link all these products below, whether I like them or not. And also all these products were sent to me unsolicited. That's what this whole video is about. Oh, it has a handle on it. That's very fancy. Oh, stuff's falling out. It looks like they have a few other designs as well, but this is the one with the bun cutouts that I have available to me today. It looks like a, like a, a mask of some like weird Pokemon character or something, doesn't it? it? Smells like new material. All right, so that's for your spine right here, for your buns right there. Hey, I'm up here, camera. All right, first use. It feels pretty good. Um, you know, mo most cushions always feel good at first though. It's how they feel after you've been sitting on them for a few hours or a few days that really matters. I can actually feel my buns going into those cutouts, which is kind of, kind of different. My first impression is that it feels pretty nice, but let me use this the rest of the day, the rest of the week. I'll get back to you on the last day of filming and see how it actually held up over the next four or five days. But you know what that means? Since I'm not going to be doing anything else on here, it's time to spin it. Just to let you know, this is the, currently the behemoth seat cushion that I've been using. I've been pretty happy with it. It's just very large and it sometimes tends to slide around. Look at this floppy thing. So if, ugh, so, so if this seat socket can work, it's a little bit more compact. I might like it better. Anyways, let's try the spinner and see what's next. All right, it's a spoon buddy. And there it is, spoon buddy. Yeah, I know it's not an SC on TV product, but that has an SC on TV name to it. It's a three in one kitchen gadget. Suction spoon rest turns plates to lids and opens jars with ease. I think this one's on Amazon. I might go read a few reviews and get a few tips before I actually put this to use. But Spoon Buddy is next. Taking a closer look at the Spoon Buddy. Now they show it, it looks like it can be used as a spoon holder. They say you can turn upside down, use it as a jar opener. It's got a suction cup on it. So it says three in one. Let me, uh, well, that was not much of an unboxing, was it? Now it's only 11.30 in the morning, so I don't really have much to make in the kitchen right now, but I've got a pot of hot water about to boil. I'm gonna use this. I'm gonna see how it holds up on the heat over time, and uh, maybe I'll find a jar I can open up with it as well. So when that boils, we'll get started. All right, the BPA-free spoon buddy has been washed off. This is nice and warm, so let me just stick it on here. What do you know, it actually works. And it does hold a spoon. That's what they show in the picture, right there. Which is a little bit weird, because when I want to lift the lid off, I guess I have to kind of work around that. Ah, maybe it's not so weird. I certainly won't, don't want to lift the lid with that. Do I? No, certainly not but it's stuck on there pretty good. I'm gonna leave it on there for a little bit. I'm gonna keep the water boiling and I'm gonna just come back in a little while and see if it still stays after it's been on this hot lid for a while. So come back in about, I don't know, 10 minutes. Uh, it seems like it's just as solid as it was before. You press that for easy release. Let's see how easy it really is to release. How do I release it when the lid is boiling hot? Hmm, maybe you're not supposed to do it when the lid's hot. Ah, oh, there we go. <laughs> That was a little shaky there though. Spoon Buddy can also be used as a jar opener. I have a jar of pickles right here. Let's put that claim to the test. Now this is a standard jar size. Standard jar size. Yeah, I guess it fits. You know what? It, it fits. Oh, juice. Oh, pickle juice. You know what though? It worked. Oh. I'm gonna leave this Spoon Buddy here for the rest of the day and see if it stays stuck to the counter or not. Right now, it's stuck well. Let's see how well it does over several hours. Oh, it's only been about 10 minutes and it already fell over, oh. I guess this is not for long-term use of spoon holding. Huh, I'm a little surprised. Something else the Spoon Buddy is supposed to do is turn a regular plate into a lid for a pot like that. Let's try it out. Stuck. Oh, it's holding. Hey, what do you know? I'm just not sure how long that would stay, but maybe you don't need it to stay for a long time. As long as it serves its purpose, you make sure it's pushed down before you pull it off there. 
Uh, I guess it works. I'm not sure how many people would do that, but I think it works. You guys tell me if you think that's a useful feature or not, because I'm not sure. Never seen anything like that before. All right, so these are not supposed to be extensive reviews, but the Spoon Buddy seems to be, I don't know, kind of works. I'm not sure how necessary something like this is, but I think that if you like the way it looks, it might work pretty well for you. I would encourage you to check out the Amazon reviews because it seems like it's kind of hit or miss with some people, so I don't know. It's an interesting idea. I'll leave it at that. You know what time it is? Time for the spinner. This is an interesting one. This might be the shortest review of all of them because that's Beersy. This came from Washington. There was no note. It just said it came. Beersy was the return address. This is all it is. It, it appears to be a fake, maybe silicone cover for a beverage that makes it look like you're drinking a soda. This says Loco Cola on it, 69 calories. I don't have alcoholic beverages in cans, but let me go grab one and try it out. I am off to a local convenience store to see if I can get a can of beer that this would fit on it. So I found some decent 12 ounce cans here, but I'm already noticing that a lot of cans that are singles are not 12 ounces. So it seems like this would be very situational. I feel like this is becoming a lot more work than it's worth to see if this thing actually works. But let's go home and find out. We will figure this out, I assure you. I've got a 12 ounce can. Let's see if it actually works. All right, well, I mean, what do you guys think? If I'm sitting there holding this, would you be fooled? If you didn't look too closely at the logo? I guess it kind of works. I mean, what's the point of this? Who out there is trying to deceive someone into thinking they're drinking something like soda when they're not? I can't imagine that ever happening. It fits really well on a 12 ounce can. Unfortunately, a lot of people out there drink larger than 12 ounce cans when it comes to a lot of different drinks. But if you got a 12 pack or a case of beer and for some reason you don't want people to know you're drinking it i guess it would work i'm not sure what to think about this tell me what you guys think and i'll move on to the next thing all right well it's been a little bit longer than eight hours actually it's been about 24 hours since the ice cube tray was in there let's check it out all right here it goes now the first thing they showed them doing was placing on the counter and pressing down very crunchy the crunch is real all right, and it looks like they were opening it with that taken off. Well, that wasn't too hard. Let's pour it out. Oh, we have ice. Interesting ice cube shape. There it is, and there it was. I think it worked pretty well. The only thing I would complain about is it seemed like it took a little bit for the ice to get out of there. I think it worked. I'm gonna say it works. Much better than the Ice Genie. I wanna see how much this actually holds with this measuring cup. So that was about 10 ounces of water, which is uh, it's pretty good. I think that's about standard. I think the ice cube trays I've tested in the past are about 10 to 14 ounces, so uh, the amount is good, unlike the Ice Genie once again, which is only six ounces. I think I'm going to say the icebreaker pop actually works. All right, I've been using the socket seat for a while now. Here's my observations about it. When you sit down on it, it does seem to compress quite a bit to the point where it's almost flat on the, on the front. Uh, there's some support in the back, but the one thing I noticed that these, these cutouts here, which I'll talk about in a second, and this tailbone divot, you really have to kind of line everything up properly or you don't really take advantage of it. I guess it depends on how much of a problem you really have. But some people like me, I tend to move around on my seat, slouch sit up to the side. So if you wanna, if you wanna sit back, I'm not, even, I'm not even on them. Sit up, some people want to sit off the side. Yeah, I know, I know this is ridiculous, but some people sit like that. In other words, you really have to kind of line yourself up with it properly to get the full benefit. Now, some people, that's absolutely worth it. Some people, like me, I'm not sure because 
I tend to move around a lot. I sit in my chair so long to sit in the same position on that seat. I, I'm not sure. But on to more serious matters here. I posted a picture of the seat socket on my social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and I asked people to name the holes. I have right here a few of the responses. Now, some of them I can't put on here. If you, if you want to see all the responses, I'll link all the posts below. But, but here are a few choice candidates, actually quite a few of them. I'll put them up here on the side, actually. We've got booty holes, bun sockets, bun breathers, butt cuts, cheekaboo holes, cheek cups, cheek peaks, cheek seats, dairy air, engineered butt airflow compartment, fanny crannies, gluteus holius, hiney holes, rear end vents, rear windows, seat nostrils, and of course, the treacherous trio, bun holes, butt holes, or just simply holes. If you're looking for a cushion, I've tried others and they didn't quite work, this might be something to check out. All right, on that note, I'm not going to do the spinner again. I just went and grabbed one off the stack. I don't even know what this is. I don't know what that means. Alet, Alet, it's from San Diego, California. It says handcrafted in San Diego. There's a letter. It says, hi, James. Good, it's not a form letter. Thank you. I own Alet wallets. The world's thinnest wallet since 1995. The wallet is simple, efficient, well thought out. It holds a ton of stuff, but stays remarkably thin. All right, so let me see what we got here. That is actually an incredibly thin wallet. All right, this is my wallet. This is, I guess it's pronounced Alet? I don't know. I'm gonna take my stuff out and see how thin it is compared to it. I will say that having a thick wallet in your back right pocket, I've actually had my right leg and my right bun fall asleep sitting on this massive thing. So if this can actually fit the same amount of stuff in less space, I'll be happy about that. Let's try that right now. All right, after opening the package, I actually realized there's three wallets in there, all of them different. The one I opened is the Slim Original Wallet. That's this one, the Nylon Original Wallet and the Slim Sport Wallet. The wallet I use, this thick thing right here, it's a little bit smaller. You can see the size difference between mine and theirs. Theirs is a little bit wider, but if it's thinner, it could be worth it. The Slim Sport Wallet is the closest to my wallet size, but it's actually a little bit smaller, I think. All right, well, I'm gonna focus on just the original for right now. Take everything out of here and in there and see what a difference it is. Let me measure how thick my wallet is when it's fully loaded. About an inch thick. It's exactly an inch thick. Time for the make the switch. This is kind of different. Um, I'm used to the, the tri-fold design with the cards coming out that way. The, these, the cards seem to face each other. If you're wondering what this is, this is actually a phone holder I did in an older video. It's actually pretty cool. Anyways, I digress. Now I've got business cards covering my personal information here. That's everything that was in my other wallet. Let's see how thick this is. Looks like it's about a half an inch. Now it is a little bit larger than my old wallet, but let me uh, try this thing out in a real world test. All right, here I am in my car once again, and this is the, the first part of my test, which is the bun comfort test. I don't think I've ever had a video with so many mentions of buns before, but I will say that this wallet is significantly thinner than my last one. Um, I mean, I measured it out and it's thinner, but it feels thinner. I, I barely even really feel it in there, which is kind of nice, actually. I've literally had my leg fall asleep in the car sitting on that wallet before, so uh, I, I do like the way this wallet spreads out the materials inside even better. What I'm going to do now, though, is go inside, whip out my wallet, and see how convenient it is to use. All right, this turned into a much longer day than I anticipated, not because of the wallet, because I had things going on. I ended up making some detours before I finished the segment of this wallet, but that actually is a good thing because I've actually had to go to a couple stores and use the wallet. And I have to say, I actually like it a lot. I'm, I've, I'm a convert. I'm already going to ditch the old wallet and use this one. One thing that's kind of funny is I'm so used to that brick that I sit on all the time that I keep thinking I don't have my wallet with me. I keep checking as I'm driving because it's so much thinner. I also like the fact that you can kind of whip it out like a sidearm. <laughs> You have two pouches for the for the money for your big bills, which my, my big bill pouch is empty right now. But if you had some big bills, you could put it in there and your smaller bills over there. My small bill one seems like it's kind of empty too. I really do like it. I don't, I don't, you know, I'm not just saying that. I've reviewed wallets in the past. I did the Atomic Charge wallet and the E-Charge wallet. 
not a fan of those at all. I end up smashing one against my cinder block wall in my backyard later on, but those were not comfortable. This is, this is a nice wallet. And it's, this is not a sponsored post. They probably gave up on me reviewing this because I think this was sent quite a while ago. I, I'm not sure, but I do think it's a good one. You should definitely check it out. Overall, I like this one. Let's recap, shall we? Let's talk about the Ice Breaker Pop. I really don't have anything negative to say about this. And I did an Ice Cube Tray review last year. This one would have scored high in that list because uh, it worked. Uh, the only thing is, I don't know what the price is going to be. It's still on Kickstarter right now. It's supposed to be in May of 20. That could be a deal breaker, but as far as function goes, the icebreaker pop, it actually works. So look for that in the middle of 2020. Now let's talk about the spoon buddy. I will say that it works as the materials say it's supposed to, but I'm not sure how necessary it really is. Now it's only about 10 bucks, so it's not really overpriced. And if you like the things that it's supposed to do, it'll probably work for you. I think it's very situational. Just have to make sure that it's restuck every time you use a suction cup because it doesn't seem to hold very long. Other than that, I, I'll keep going. Next up is the Beersy and their Loco Cola can sleeve. Now, someone asked if this was legal. I mean, it's advertised as a gag gift and they say it's not supposed to be used to divert the law. I'll just take them for their word for it. But as far as that goes, I guess it looks kind of realistic. I mean, if you saw this from far away, you probably wouldn't know. Um, but as far as how it's used, I'll leave that up to you. It's a, another one that's about 10 bucks. You guys tell me if that's worth it or not. I actually really like this wallet. These wallets seem to range between like 25 and $55. There's a lot of different models. So it depends on the model you choose. It's also made in the USA, which is important to some people. The only thing I don't really know how to pronounce it. I've, their website, all the videos have no audio that announces the name of it. So I looked at some reviews. I watched three reviews and all three of them pronounce it differently. So is it Alet, Alet, Alet? I don't know. Since it rhymes with wallet, I'm going to say all it. But I actually think this is a very good wallet. I'm quite happy with it. I'm not really big on wallet reviews, but this is something you might want to consider. Now, as far as the Waka Instant Coffee goes, it's not something I consume regularly. Actually, it's been decades. That's so not very regularly, but it was pretty good. I've had a couple cups since then. I really don't have anything bad to say about it. They've definitely taken the instant coffee to a level that's beyond what I ever had. So I give them props for that. And finally, it's the socket seat, which is the interesting looking seat cushion. Now with a $70 price tag, it seems like your condition will probably dictate whether this is a good deal for you or not. If you have tailbone pain, it seems like it'd be really well suited for you. For just for general comfort, it might be a bit overpriced compared to some other options out there. Depending on your needs, this may or may not be a great deal for you. Man, I barely made a dent in my stack of stuff, so I think I'm gonna come back in another month and do another set of mail time reviews until I get this mess cleaned out of here. So thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you next time. All right, so if you've watched this far, congratulations, you found the secret message. Now the company that sent these to me sent me three of them. I'm only gonna use one, obviously. So what I'm gonna do is on Twitter, because there's no real way to message on YouTube, and I don't really wanna clutter the comments below, but I'm gonna give two of these away on Twitter. So respond to the tweet where I tweet out this video and just mention the word wallet. You don't have to say anything about a giveaway. Let's kind of keep it between us. But just mention the, wa the word wallet in, in your response to my tweet, and I'll pick two people from those. We'll get a free wallet. I'll give it. A, I'll give it about a week. So if you're if you're seeing this video after uh, January of 2020, it's too late. <laughs>